This is not a how-to video. This is just some tips. I wasn't finding any uh, good videos online as to how to pop these ball joints out of here without using either an air hammer or the Motocraft special tool, which is well over $200. So all I'm going to do here is give you some tips on just how to get the ball joints popped out of the knuckle. You can see other videos for how to get the whole control arm out. But this is with just using some propane, mini sledge, and the Harbor Freight ball joint remover tool. I only used Harbor Freight stuff for this because I'm out of town. All right, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna have to modify the Harbor Freight tool a little bit. As you can see, I went in here with the angle grinder and cut these open a little wider so they would fit around the top of the ball joint. So it goes, it goes in here like this. So as you can see, I already did them. But you wanna get tool over that sleeve there. Now, I don't see why you wouldn't do that, but if you're just gonna hit him with a hammer or an air uh, um, air hammer, that sleeve can come out with it. You don't want that because uh, they can break. And also, sometimes you gotta pull them off, or you will have to pull them off the the old ball joint because the new uh, ball joints don't come with them, or the whole control arm because it's one piece. So the Harbor Freight tool, fortunately, will go over that. Now, when I do it, I take some pliers and I rip the old rubber out so I can get the tool in there. I rip that rubber out. It gives you enough, just enough space. You can slap that tool in. It's like that. So I set the tool with the pin in the higher position. See those two? That was a little tight. All you had to do was once it was in like that, you tap the back of it with a hammer and it'll slide over. You gotta get that anvil over the stud. Take the nut out, obviously. There's some other steps before that too. But, all right, so once you got that in there, you're gonna hit this with uh, either the impact or torque it up manually. It will break. This will break here, this, this bar. Ask me how I know. So you gotta put a whole bunch of force on it, but not too much. And I, fortunately, I got no number for you. So you're just gonna have to learn from experience. You're gonna put a whole bunch of force on it. So it's pushing that ball joint up. And then it's probably not gonna pop on its own, at least not in the rust belt states like this. So then you're gonna take your mini sledge and you're gonna whack this in here. You're gonna whack the inside of the knuckle. You see, uh, I actually deformed it. I hit it hard enough. You can see the metal is a uh, kind of been pushed down there some. But you gotta do what you gotta do. So one thing that made it easier is I also put the bolt back in the top. So when you hit this, it hits it with even more force. If you take that out first, it actually kind of it kind of moves out with a whole knuckle assembly. Kind of moves out when you hit it with a hammer. That was that helped me get a little bit more force in there. I also heated the stud up with some protein, propane. Uh, not a ton of heat, just enough that it started to make the uh, grease up here start smoking. So, one of the number one more warnings here is you gotta make sure you protect the boot. There is a, a tip hidden in the service manual that you might skip over that says you gotta protect the boot because they can come out with enough force that they will damage it. As you can tell, that's a new axle there. The day after I did this job, the car's all good to go, ready to drive it, and there's a nice puddle of grease on both sides sitting in the knuckle here. Where's that coming from? I'll tell you where it's coming from. There's the old axle. They both look like this. It slit, you hit it hard enough that it pushed that down and actually cut the CV axle. So in the morning, the grease had just kind of dripped out of it. 
on both sides. Boy, it's uh, not a good ending to a job. These things are so fragile. Anyways, I didn't feel that bad because this is what one of the fusions that has the problem with the surface finish on the axles. So, as you can tell, this one was already leaking. So, I replaced the axle. The new one hasn't leaked at all yet. But, nonetheless, it kind of sucks. So, be careful.